Looks like the river has <clears throat> gone up a few more feet. The water's now out in the parking lot. So good thing we're leaving. Also this morning, the bench is completely underwater. Water was now a little bit across the road. I didn't notice it before, but I just saw some car come through. And it gets a little sketchy here sometimes from the river. We'll be making our way through here this morning. I hope it's not too bad. Here we are leaving Altamaha Regional Park and the, the river is getting a little high. So here we come through the water. First time we've ever done this. Success. Help us that way the best of our way. Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm John. And we're the geezers on the go. Go, go, go. Welcome to Altamaha Regional Park on the Altamaha River in Glynn County, Georgia. Despite a little overflow now and then, we love this friendly little place. The campground is located about 75 miles south of Savannah and is close to the Interstate 95, and it's also about 15 miles from the historic seaport town of Brunswick. Altamaha offers 50 campsites, 30 with full hookups, there's also 10 sites and a full service camp store where they cook up a really nice breakfast too. The Altamaha is the third largest contributor of fresh water into the Atlantic Ocean in North America. But don't worry, they'll keep you advised if there's any real flood danger. We've also got a couple of interesting side trips planned. First, we'll give you a tour of the city of Brunswick. Established in 1738 and one of the five original ports of entry into the American colonies. Oh, there's a place with a tasting room. Then we'll drive out to Jekyll Island for some spectacular seashore scenery and visit a park that's, well, a little bit too busy for us. We're here at Altamaha, or Altamaha Regional Park. It's a county park in Brunswick, Georgia. We're in Site P1. We have water, electrics, and sewer. And we're supposed to have cable, although we haven't gotten it to work. It's a, what I would consider a fish camp. It's not, no, not, nothing fancy, nothing spectacular, but it's not a bad place to stop. Um, we're staying for a week. You stay for a week, you get one day free. It's about $30 a night. So with the one day free, it comes out to be, I guess, $27. And, we had stayed in this site once before because we liked it because this big tree is here. And as you can see, this there's a cement slab here, but I'm not exactly sure what it's good for. We decided to put up our um, little screen house because it did, had gotten a little bit buggy as the weather's warmed up. But we've been here before and we kind of like it. The campground sort of starts at this end. There's some sites along the river. I think there's a total of 50 campsites here and about 30 have full hookups. And it's laid out a little oddly, but they just redid a lot of it because it was flooded a couple of years ago and the county came in, put some cement slabs, but although they're kind of little to me. But you have some sites here along the river. One, two, one, two three, four, five. A little close, but you'd be backed up looking at the river and all of them are supposed to have water electric sewer and cable although we haven't gotten the cable to work I'm not sure they actually have it all connected maybe in the next couple days there's seven more sites that run here along the fence line actually on the other side of the fence is private property but I still think they're a little bit close since they redid a lot of them those all too have the full hookups I thought this was kind of a funny little thing till I figured out that I think 
because this area does get flooded once in a while. All their power is up, up above, so it doesn't get wet. Ours and the one site next to us are the only ones with the full hookups in there for RVs and trailers. The rest of the sites here along here all are just tent sites until you get towards the back of the campground where there's more uh, full hookups. Even though they have full hookups and everything, there is a bathhouse here, but that's used mostly for the tent campers. And you, they give you a code for it because I think they don't want people who maybe just came fishing for a day to come in and use the showers or just somebody, other people coming in. But as you can set, tell, they're doing some grading, trying to get the park, I guess, ready for the busier season. It's just about the middle of March, and we'll see how busy it gets over the next couple days because the woman in the uh, office said well, they might get busier over the weekend. On the back part of the park here, there are some more full hookup sites. They're all, I'm supposing, back ends. But I still don't think it gave you much space in between each one, but I guess most of the people who come here in a weekend don't really care. But there, there you have it. This is the whole campground. I said it's about he said 50 sites and I'm guessing about 30 of them have full hookups but the 10 sites do have water and electric so it's not exactly primitive. It's Saturday today and when we first got here in the middle of the week there was only three other campers here and today's Saturday you can see <laughs> it's a little bit more. Everybody survived last night we had a big rainstorm about midnight we had to take down our screen house here got it back up a good thing because with the rain brought the skeeters right right John lots of skeeters lots of skeeters I, skeeters the size of dogs <laughs> they pl taken away like take some small children <laughs> but when we first got here because they just redid the park we didn't have a picnic table so I said hey any way to get a picnic table well yesterday they brought this one in there it's like weighs a thousand pounds and there's a couple other campsites they brought them too they didn't have any so they can all thank us that we now have a picnic table. One more quick look around. I said this Saturday and after we came on Wednesday, there was only three or four people here. Now there's a lot more people. I love this guy's tent. It looks like a little cabin. And there was nobody or just along the river there. And now it's all full. So I guess it's pretty popular. Most of the people are all local from, from Georgia, which I would expect. This is more like a fish camp. And that's what people come here is to go fishing. The weekend's over and it's Monday again and we're pretty much by ourselves again. <laughs> There's only about three people here. Us. Right over there, maybe four. So a couple ladies over there from Montreal, but I think they said they were going to Jekyll Island today. Not that far from the campground proper. You just walk this way and you have where all the boats go. There's a, some uh, boat launch and there's a little house over there this is a, it's the office snack bar uh, gift shop a little bit of everything in there so let's go look at the water this bit, I think is part of a dock but I also think there's like a little beach here and this is more of a sandy boat launch and another one over farther this looks like it must at one time been a railroad crossing here with a swing bridge, but it looks like it's worked for a long, long time. It's the Altamaha River. Altamaha. I found out that this one time was an actual running railroad track here. It still belongs to the railroad, but they haven't used it since the 80s, and it used to run from Savannah all the way down to Jacksonville. And the swinging part of the bridge, she said, Used to t it was hand done. It wasn't operated by any uh, machinery, but it was said to take 80 men to turn that thing around so that the train could go. There's still a little part of it there, but that's about all that's left of it. They said they've talked about do refixing it, but it would cost too much money. They'd have to change a lot of it. And nobody wants to change the character. Yeah, they got a lot of good stuff in there. I just bought a little a T-shirt with a big picture of a bass on the back, something I like. So you can ice cream in there, they got snacks, all kinds of good stuff. Over on this side, you got some swings and there's a pretty 
nice dock that goes out to here and a little pavilion. Over on the other side of the pavilion there's another boat launch right here, a little bit better one. Only weird thing to me is that there's a, a tree sort of <laughs> where you back up and then you can park right there. And there's a little laundry over in the back there. We'll take a walk out on the dock out here. The lady in the in the house said that the river is going to rise a few more feet, but won't be too bad. But this is kind of cool. You could probably fish off of here, and once you get your boat, and you probably hook it up here, and then go go park your trailer. This is a pretty fast-moving river, and it warns you there's no swimming right along here because the currents are very swift. There's some color coming from this spring because it's mid-March. At the far end of the park here, there's another whole section in addition to having a little playground here. The whole back, there's all kinds of cabins, houses, double wides, trailers that people stay, I guess, for the whole summer. You come back here and you can see all the cabins and permanent structures here. Uh, that look like some people live here, I guess, but a lot of it is just seasonal. Come, they, or people come in when they feel like going fishing hunting because this is part of a gigantic wildlife management area. The park itself is only 70 acres, but there's hunting and fishing and all types of things all in the surrounding land here. We were here uh, about a couple of years ago. How much long is it? Five, five, five years ago. And it's a nice little park. It's a, called a regional park or a county park in Glynn County, Georgia. And we were going to come back again uh, a year or so later, but they had so much rain that the river f flooded and the, the whole campground was underwater. Well, the park was closed. And yeah. of course, that's one of the reasons or the main reason that it's changed a little bit since we were here last time. The, yeah. They put in some uh, a few small cement pads for mm -hmm. picnic tables. They did redid all of their electric, electric and, and all of their plumbing. plumbing. And right now they have about uh, 50 sites, and I would say probably 30 of them are all full hookup. And they give you a pretty good rate. It's uh, um, around $30 or so, and if you stay for a week, they give you one day for yeah. free. Yeah, which is which we've done. And most of the people here are a lot of locals come. Right now it's during the week, and we're like the only one here. But on the weekend, it gets pretty crowded with a. Uh, people yeah, going well, fishing and picnicking. Yeah, it, and it's, it's really kind of a fish camp, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah. Didn't they catch a record fish near here? Yeah, I think upriver, I think that the world record uh, bass was caught um, about maybe 40 miles upriver. But the people here are real friendly. There's a really nice little uh, uh, camp store with just about everything you can need. And then we also had breakfast at a good price. And yeah, uh, they yeah they serve breakfast here, and they uh, it, it's got a real sort of country, yeah, calm you know yeah. laid back uh, uh, flavor to it. Yeah. Except on the weekends when the uh, <laughs> when the good old boys come in and, <laughs> but that's and okay. party a little bit. But. <laughs> but there's a few things to do in the area. Uh, the town of Brunswick is about 15, 20 miles, and it's a historic little town. It has known for uh, had ports and things and yeah it's a big seaport uh, you can see a lot of ships uh, right big going arena, in and arena. out it's a fishing port uh, uh, we sat and watched uh, shrimpers oh. come in and at, uh, at a restaurant that we stayed at was right along the water which was nice and yeah that was nice we went to a distillery uh, which uh, uh, had the uh, uh, rum. Uh, rum their <laughs> their top of the their line rum was once judged the best in the world. Yeah, they they, and they do from start to finish. They grow the, the sugar cane and do all the distillery and, the, yeah. and do, do everything here. So it's a nice little place. And, and if you want to venture out a little farther, you can go to uh, Jekyll Island, which has a lot of nice beaches. It's about 45 minutes uh, to an hour. And also St. Simon also has some beaches and a really pretty lighthouse. Yeah, we took advantage of uh, a nice day uh, mm -hmm. earlier in the week to go out to Jekyll Island, and we'll take you out and show you. But first, we'll take a ride into Brunswick. We're basically in the heart of the historic district of Brunswick now. Uh, Brunswick is about how far? About, to, about 15 miles. About 15 miles from a campground. Oh, there's a place with a tasting room, Ooh. a rum distillery. Oh, we should go there. Jill's passing up all these empty parking spaces. <laughs> 
go around the block. We'll just want to see what's here. Look at all the different... But by the time we go around the block, I might not be thirsty. <laughs> and here we are at the rum distillery. It says, almost world famous. <laughs> almost world famous. <laughs> On the sign. Well, obviously after appearing in our video, they will be... They will have made it. Then we found Jackie's Seafood Market. Brunswick, Georgia here seems to be full of uh, lots of little places they call squares. This is just one of them. This one's called Jekyll Square East and I just found out that this Jekyll guy <laughs> is, um, was named for Sir Joseph Jekyll. And there's Jekyll Island not that far away, and he was a member of Parliament. And he's got a little park named after him. There's a couple other ones scattered around the, the city. And this is right out here, all kinds of shops and everything. This is Mocking Square, which is supposed to be at one time one of the only developed ends of town. And nice little park here. This is another half of this Mackin Mac Square. There's a little fountain here, some pretty trees. And these are scattered all around the historic district of Brunswick. Hey, this is uh, Brunswick Landing. It's dock number 10 there. This is private property and technically uh, <laughs> we're not supposed to be here. So we just wanted to take you down here and show you all the pretty boats. Guess, big ones. <laughs> yeah, some big ones. I guess they have a thriving maritime community uh, down here. to the bridge now to Jekyll Island. Very cool looking. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty impressive looking bridge. And it's a very high one too to allow uh, ships to come up the channel here. Well, we are on Jekyll Island. Got to pay $10 <laughs> to drive on that road. They just want to make sure that you really want to be here. We were sure. We had been here before and we knew it would be worth it. If you drive along the beachside road that goes along Jekyll Island, I guess for your $10 there's several of these little pull-off places and there's John. We just had some lunch there and you have direct access here to the beach. You? You come down here. Not as many people as I thought might be on the beach today because it's close to 80 degrees. But, but one other nice thing is here is that the, there's bathrooms right here, but there's also changing rooms in there. So you can go in there and change into your swimsuits. There's some shop, outside showers, so clean yourself up. So if you came down for the day from wherever you're camping, just down by us, there's a couple other, another one other campground. It takes about an hour. It would be worth it. There's lots of and do down here on the island and for your 10 bucks you get to sit on the beach and have changing rooms and access to a lot of different amenities about the only amenity we didn't care for was its regional park campground we've been through it before so we just wanted to double check all right we're going up into the c section right now <laughs> that sounded funny didn't it um just taking a look at some of these See how tightly packed in they are. You know, it's it's it it's sort of a, a crapshoot when you come up here. Some of these sites are not too bad to get into. Uh, some of them would be uh, 
virtually impossible to back into. Like the ones down here at the end would be kind of nice because at least we got trees in between, but I don't know. It just looks like a storage lot to me. And so if you're camping here, you're camping for uh, for the location. This other loop over here, look, they look a little bit bigger, but not much. At least these look a little more angled. And there are walkways down to the beach, but still, I just, this is not for us. <laughs> Maybe for some people, but this is just not a, it's just too crowded. Okay, we're almost done with our tour, and for the second time going through here, our, our opinion hasn't changed, and all I can think of right now is, get me the heck out of here. After all, there are so many other really great places to visit on the island. Right before you get to the campground, there's another little bikeway, walkway here that looks like almost a boneyard. So we'll take a walk down here, see what it looks like. Okay, this is called uh, Driftwood Beach. So we're gonna go down here. You can't cut anything, can't feed anything, but we can go look. So let's take a look. This Driftwood Beach sort of reminds me of the boneyard down at Edisto Beach in South Carolina with all the beech wood and tangled branches. Kind of eerie. I'm going to take a walk through this little driftwood boneyard part of here up, up on Jekyll Island. Kind of cool. There was something like this when we were in South Carolina at Edisto Beach, but this is a lot more. Looks like at one time there were trees all planted here. Now they have all kinds of cool shapes from the wind. The area also offers a few other great places to stop. Just outside the uh, oh the campground here that we didn't care much for, there's Clam Creek. It's just about 40 miles from our campground. At Altamaha or Altamaha and there's the way out there you can see the bridge we came out over and there's a nice little fishing pier they have some little horseback riding so I'm gonna take a quick walk around right before you go out on the pier there's a the Jekyll fishing center and they have all kinds of little things inside bait tackle food ice cream and hopefully nobody catches that big shark this clam creek area would be a nice place to spend the day if you whether you wanted to go fishing or just sort of sit. There's a little beach over there. There's a big pavilions here and lots of trees that you can sit. Lots of Spanish moss, very pretty setting. I'm gonna take a walk down to where that little beach is. I'm gonna walk down this little beach and boy there's some big ship boat just went by on a big yacht. There's lots of different things you can see along here. Now I think we've about seen it all, so we're going to pack up and head out. As always, we're happy to have you along, and we'll see you down the road.